Amen. Amen. Lord, I wanted to talk about Matthew 25. I love this chapter. It's got these three parables in it. And uh, boy, it really says a whole lot. Uh, there's a mouthful. First one is the uh, 10 foolish versions. I want to set that aside for a moment. But I want to talk about the third parable, the sheep and the goats. So let, let me, let's go to the word of God very briefly. I'll scan it. And don't have to read the whole thing. It says, when the Son of Man shall come into his glory with it and the whole angels, then he'll sit on the throne of glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Now, I don't know nothing about sheep. I ain't a shepherd. Now, you got to divide, though. I don't know. what Was there a problem? Did the goats beat up the sheep or something like that? You know, reminds me of when I was a kid on the streets of New Jersey. And, you know, if you let the if you let the goats push you around man, they, they would knock you around for good. What's the difference? I don't know. But the sh a good shepherd will separate the goats out of the flock so that the sheep are at peace and they don't have the goats bothering them. And he'll uh, set the sheep in the right hand, goats on the left, and he says uh, to the sheep, says, come to the blessed into the, the, the inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Because why? Listen to these reasons. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was a stranger, you took me in. Uh, if you're thinking spiritual, when you're hungry for the truth, you know what that's like? You remember when you weren't saved? If you're out there you're and you're not saved and you're hungry for what is the real meaning in life, you're still hungry. You're hungry for the bread of life, but you, a, lot, you, a lot of times you don't know it. Thirsty for the living waters. Um, and the sheep gave them drink. Uh, I was a stranger and you took me in. In other words, you invited me into the church. Came, told, told me to come on to services. Naked. I didn't have the, the robes of righteousness on, but you clothed me. Um, I was in prison, the prison of sin, and you visited me. In other words, you came out and you witnessed to me about the truth because I was locked up in sin. Uh, and then, then the righteous answers and says unto them, when did we see you? And he says, in, in as much as you had not done it to the least of these, you didn't do it to me. And then comes along the goats. And what does he say to the goats here? I, you know, my glasses are barely read this thing and he says unto them verily i say unto you in as much as okay i got that part uh, then he says unto them on the left hand depart from me you cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels oh wait a minute what what, what i thought how come the sheep get to go in and, and we don't i mean why are we going to hell burning hell we're talking specifically this is like outer darkness where you could say, well, it was just profound regret. No, this is hell. Because why? Because when I was hungry, you eat no meat. You didn't feed me with the bread of life. You, you let me starve. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me the living waters. When I was stranger, you didn't take me in. You didn't bring me into the church. You didn't clothe me with the robes of righteousness. You saw I was naked. You saw I needed to be clothed with, with a robe of righteousness. Um, I was in prison, and you never even visited me. I was in the prison of sin, and you never, you know, it, and that just never bothered you, did it? You never bothered. And you said, "Well, Lord, when did we see you in prison? Or, well, if, if I had seen you, Lord, I mean, I would have, I would have fed you. I would have done this. When did we see you?" And that's a chilling answer he gives. Inasmuch as you have not done it to the least of these, you didn't do it to me. Wow. In other words, look out there in the streets. Look out there in the, in, in the world, in the fields of harvest. You see them? They're the least of them. And if you don't do it to them, it's as if you didn't do it to the Lord himself. I mean, you can feel these guys all of a, you know, <gasps> yeah, realization hits you. You know, you knew, but you never did anything. You let them go and burn in hell because you were full of church. Uh, and the day of judgment, all of a sudden it comes, all comes back around. Well, I've got two stories to tell you. One, I was in a, uh, a small storefront church. 
in the middle of services, I think it was like the third or fourth song, was about almost ready to turn over to the preacher. And the Lord speaks to me and he says, look up, what do you see? And I thought, I don't know, man. You know, I, I look up, I'm looking all over the place. I, I thought I'm going to see something. What am I going to see, you know? I said, Lord, I, all I see is a roof. And then the Lord spoke to me again. This really happened, by the way. I'm not making this up. The Lord spoke to me again. He said, look around you. What do you see? I thought, oh, man, I am going to get to see angels. I just know it, man. I remember reading that book with Amy Simple McPherson with the angels standing around the back wall. Oh, boy. And I'm looking. I'm like, Fine. Yeah, man, I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking. And I, I thought, man, did I do something wrong? Am I in trouble here? Was I supposed to see something? Because I didn't see nothing. I can't lie to God. I mean, he knows I didn't see. Lord, all I see is walls. He says, no. What you see is a bushel basket. Ooh. Remember that passage? Don't take your candle and hide it under a bushel. So the, the, but hold it out so all the world could see. Now, if it was a brother saying this to me out of blue and enough, this is Almighty God breathing down my neck here because I'm sitting in a church being a Laodicean Christian, making excuses of why I'm not went out there winning souls, spending time, you know, with each other. Church is inwardly focused and ignoring souls that are out there. Okay. Guess what, man? They built a fire under me, man. I'm I was out there, man. Whoa, yeah. You know, I, man. I don't know. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. He, I, he was not satisfied with me going to church. That's not what he called me to do. He didn't call you to do that either. You know, we do a lot of religious things that are good. But what he called you to do was go out and be a witness in the world, to be a light shining in the world so that the darkness will flee. Is somebody needs to hold up the torch, and he's talking to you. He said, if you will come after me, let him let you deny yourself, and pick up your cross and follow me. Where did he go? He went to Calvary to give his life so you could be saved. And he tells you to do the same thing. If you would come after him, you have to do the same thing he did. Give your life so that souls can be saved. Kind of a stringent message. You don't hear this every day. I don't know why. This, this is the basics of the gospel. One more story. And this happened, it was supposed to be a revival prayer meeting, and they were praying for everything else except revival. And uh, I stood up and, and I, I reproved them, and to, to their credit, everybody started praying. But the Lord gave me a vision at that time. And I saw a wharf that jutting out into the ocean, very, very wide, and a very sunny day, and all these people were on the wharf. Bright clothes, reds, yellows, greens, man. And everybody's blessing each other. Oh, praise the Lord, brother. Glory to God. Go, oh, God's going to bless you, sister. No, oh, praise Jesus. Thank you, Jason. Jesus, wonderful. And they all smile. Everybody's smiling and having a good time. Praise, singing songs, you know. And I watched as the vision opened up. And then out there in the ocean, choppy waves, I mean, angry choppy waves, were thousands and thousands of people drowning, waving, help, help. And I, I'm yelling, send them, throw them a life preserver, or you know, better yet, just jump in and go get them. I mean, there's thousands of these people. Come on. And then the people on the wharf, are they just praising the Lord? Thank you. Oh, I see a car in your future. Praise God. God is going to bless you. <laughs> yes, he did. And I'm thinking, hey, what's wrong with you? And I realized something. It's one of those things, you know, how sometimes the Lord will, things were pregnant with meaning. I just knew. It wasn't that they didn't care. I mean, they cared. They, they really did. Or they just couldn't hear. You know why? Because their ears were all plugged up with church. And they couldn't hear the cries of the people that were drowning in sin. Wow. Now, Lord gave me that vision. Think what you will. Say what you will. I don't really care. That's the Lord. That's the Lord gave me that. Um, where does that put you? You know what I mean? I I'm going to say this. Yes, you need to be a witness, but you also need to have the power to be able to be a witness. 
Uh, I was explaining on a broadcast there, the one of the, the, you know, everybody's afraid to witness. They don't know what to say. Hey, you don't got to say anything. Get a little card, a little business card you know, that has your church on it, address them, whatever, you know. They don't, doesn't have to be a fancy gospel track with a bunch of stuff nobody's going to read. Just give them a little card with an address and a phone number. Hand it to them. Tell them, hey, come on by church. What are you doing on Sunday? Come on. Better yet, I put on the back of my business cards, and I wish I had one with me right now, a, little, a small print, but it, the plan of salvation on the back of the card. And I don't even say anything. I just hand, did you get one of these? Here you go, here you go, did you get one of these? You go to a marketplace or something like that, and you hand them all out. You know, I guarantee you, if you and your church took a box of business cards, you know, you got a thousand cards in a box, guarantee you, you go out there and you pass that out out there, believe me, your church will double in size in no time at all. Unless you're already 50,000 people or something. I don't know. Do you follow me? I mean, the prince, listen, I've been doing this for, for, I don't know, 20 years or so. Even more than that, you go back to the 70s. And I'm telling you, it works. I'm telling you. It, we're, we're talking thousands and thousands of people getting saved. Churches doubling and tripling, quadrupling in size over there in Africa where I, where I used to do this. And in a matter of weeks, people just need somebody to come and invite them to come. And God he needs to use you. Now, you don't have to know all a bunch of stuff. You don't have to, you know, preach. You don't have to have any answers. You can tell them, I don't know. I don't know. But if you want an answer, come to church. Which, you know, we'll, we'll find it. Invite them to come. God will do the rest of the work. He'll use that card and he will trouble them and he will work them and work them and work them until they finally come. If they don't come, man, it's like, you know, leave it up to the Lord. You know, that's not your job. You hand that card, you make that invitation, let them do it and let them come. Do something because I'm telling you, there's many passages here. Um, and I use a lot of them, you know, over the years when I be preaching this message that does not allow you to get off the hook just because you think, you know, you're, whatever your excuse is, you're too old to do it. Now I'm 71 years old and I can still go out there and it's not so much one-on-one -on -one witnessing something, go to the prayer room. Everybody can pray. No excuses, man. Do something because I'm telling you, you read it as with the, this, just the one passage about the sheep and the goats and I can keep going. Every tree that doesn't bring forth fruit will be hewn down, cast in the fire. They're talking about you. And the fruit is souls. John 15, the, the true vine, the branch. Branch doesn't bring forth fruit. It's broken off and thrown in the fire. I, I mean, I'm telling you. If, if you do or do not agree, whatever, don't pass this message by. Go ask the Lord what he wants you to do. And even if it's just prayer, you'd be an old lady and you can't get out there. I get that, man. But you know what? You can pray. You can pray. You can support those that will. You can do something. Do something. You will be held accountable. Not for going to church. Not for being a good person. Not for having you know, basket socials. But what did you do? My son gave his blood. Shed his blood so that these souls could be saved, and he commissioned you to go out and make disciples go into all the world. What did you do? Better have an answer. Praise the Lord. This is Brother Dale. Uh, I don't have a closing screen on here, but I will tell you I'm with Revival Fire Ministries, and uh, our website is revivalfire.org, O-R-G. Very simple, and you can get all our information, videos, tracks, books, whatever it is, uh, on that website. In the meantime, praise the name of the Lord. Amen.